All right, guys. So my name is Gabriel, and today we're going to be going over another skill. Today, the skill that we're going to be going over is blood pressure, right? So in order to do a blood pressure, we need, of course, our blood pressure cuff, a stethoscope, and two alcohol prep pads. All right, I have Miss Ashley here with me. She's going to be playing the role of my patient. All right. Now, with all of our skills, we want to make sure that we remember to knock on the door, introduce ourselves, um, and let our patient know what we're going to be doing today. All right, let's get started. Hi, Ms. Ashley. My name is Gabriel. I'm going to be your CNA today. All right, and I'm just going to be taking your blood pressure. It should take me about one or two minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. Fantastic. Now, when it comes to vital skills, taking a temperature is our only gloved um, vital sign, so we do not need gloves for this skill. All right, so I'm going to wash my hands, not put on gloves. <clears throat> Actually, I'm going to get my blood pressure cuff placed on my patient. Now, when we are taking a blood pressure as a CNA, we are taking like a brachial blood pressure. So we need to put that blood pressure cuff up on the bicep so that we can occlude that brachial artery. Now, I know that if you work out in the wild, you may see them do forearm, calf or even thigh blood pressures but for the state exam for being a cna the only approved spot for us to do blood pressure is bicep brachial all right all right just gonna put your arm out just like so okay it's gonna be a little snug okay just like that. You can relax that arm down. You want to make sure that your patient is arm is relaxed. You want to make sure they have both feet flat on the floor. Now, place. now if your patient um, is coming in in a hurry, right? They're late to their appointment. They're having lots of anxiety. We want to make sure that we give them 10 to 15 minutes to sit so that their blood pressure can normalize. If not, we may get um, inaccurate results. Right. Here. I wanna make sure that I clean my stethoscope, especially the part that's gonna be going into my ears and the part that's gonna to be touching my patient. Make sure we let that air dry. You probably don't want alcohol in your ears. Now, when we are <clears throat> taking that blood pressure, it actually kind of tells us where on our patient we need to put the diaphragm of our stethoscope. So if we're looking, we're on Miss Ashton's right arm. So I'm gonna just follow it down just underneath where it is. Now, when we pump up our patient, we want to pump them up as long as their blood pressure is normal between 160 and 180. Ms. Ashley, do you have normal blood pressure? Yes. Right. No. Perfect. <clears throat> All right. Now, when we start releasing that blood pressure, uh, or the air of that blood pressure cuff, we want to make sure that we do it nice and slow. We want sweeping hand like a clock. Perfect. And then we're gonna make sure that we let um, all the air out of it once we're done. Now, when we're looking at our blood pressure, our systolic pressure is going to be the top number, and that systolic pressure is going to be the very first beat that we hear, followed by consistent beats. 
right? You may hear some other intravascular noise, but we want to hear the first beat that we hear that's followed by a consistent beat is our systolic pressure number. Our diastolic pressure number is going to be the very last beat that we hear followed by silence, okay? And for Miss Ashton, our systolic was 128 and our diastolic was about 62 which is within our normal limit for blood pressure, all right? At that point, I'm gonna take the cuff off of my patient. Okay. I take my second alcohol. I clean my stethoscope a second time. All right. Clean up my trash. I put my blood pressure cuff away. Put away my stethoscope. I thank my patient. Thank you so much, Ms. Ashley. All right. I wash my hands and then I go record and report.